Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Sean Diddy Combs hit with 120 new SA allegations. Let's get this thing started. I don't know how we got here from this man behind me to what we're seeing right now play out. You tell me when have you ever seen anything like this play out? And we're going to watch this to see what's going on with the new news break, where they're going to break down these 120 new SA allegations. Sit back. If you subscribed already, hit the notification. If you not subscribed, subscribe and hit the notification. And you already know that the like button is a must. All right. You know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. Um, breaking news. Sean Diddy Combs hit with a new 120 SA allegations against him. You're not even going to believe this one, man. It's like right now, everybody's going for a piece of the pop. We already know that the uh, state have, uh, the government have it tied up where if he's found guilty, he have to forfeit over bad boy Sean uh, Combs Enterprise. Combs Enterprise. The um alcohol uh, holic beverage uh, line. He also has to turn over the apparel line. He got to turn over, you know, Bad Boy Studio. He got to turn it all over. But before he turn it over, you better believe they're running for the bag, and that's what this is about right now. The uh the feds want the bag, and the people want their cut. All right, so let's hear this out. These uh, listen, man. Uh, we are gonna play this out. This is crazy. Y'all got to hear this. Breaking news right now related to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Major new allegations today of sexual assault and exploitation by Combs. For the first time, we are hearing about victims who say they were minors when they were allegedly assaulted by the music star. The youngest allegedly just nine years old. The allegations were revealed today by attorneys representing more than 100 alleged victims who are preparing to sue. So let's bring in NBC News entertainment correspondent Chloe Malone. Yo, listen, before Chloe come on, right? Hold on, Chloe. Before she come on, can you believe that they saying that this has been going on for three decades? The man said 3,000 people called him, and he narrowed it down so far to 120 because he's vetting everything out. Come on, man. Chloe, tell him what's up. Loss right now. So, Chloe, we know there is currently a press conference underway. We do have a live picture of that. Can you just walk us through these new allegations and tell us if we've heard from Combs yet? So, the individual that you see on the screen right now, that is an attorney based out of Houston, Texas, and his name is Tony Busby. He's been a part of some very well known litigation uh, over the years involving a BP oil spill, even involving the Astro World Music Festival. Hey, yo, y'all remember the BP oil spill? I feel like riding. So I'm for break it up. We're going to get back to that, but this is how we ride here at the Mecca. Sit back, put your seatbelt on, and please allow me to drive my whip. Now, I was in Oklahoma, and I was coming from California um, to Oklahoma, and then I was going to Florida, to Coleman, Florida, 2010. That's when I ran into Barry Vessel, a.k.a. Chinaman, in the holdover, right? Because you run everybody over in the federal holdover. So I'm in the federal holdover, and we fly in in June 2010. You understand? And we're flying over the Atlantic, over there, the, 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 the Gulf by Louisiana. And, you know, when you look out the window, it's supposed to be all beautiful blue and the sunlight hitting it. But as far as the naked eye could see, it was black like tar, the ocean from when they had that BP oil spill. And that's what they said that, you know, he uh, represented. And, and I sat there and watched that as the oil was leaking out from in the ground, you know, in the Gulf over there in uh, Louisiana. It was leaking out from in the ground and they were showing it and they had to go underground and patch it. So, you know, I was glued to the TV because I'm locked in right now. I'm about maybe 15, 18 years in 
on my life sentence. So I'm watching this to see what's going on in the world. And then I was blessed to fly over it, to witness it with my own eyes, because I couldn't even believe it. Because remember, after that, they used to have the commercials where they had the ducks that came out with the oil all over them and, you know, was wiping them off with the dove. And that's what put dove on the map. See, I remember all that, but that's how I could connect myself with everything dealing with the BP oil spill all the way from in jail. I learned that from a joint that I read while I was in ADX, I think it was back in the 90s, called 10 Degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon. Y'all remember 10 Degrees of Kevin Bacon? How you can shoot it? Somebody connected, somebody connected, somebody connected, somebody to back to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what that was dealing with. Let's knock this out, man. Uh, crisis where some individuals were killed during a stampede. So he um, has made headlines before, but this is uh, pretty shocking. So he claims at this is claiming right now at this press conference that he has had over 3,000 individuals reach out to his law firm in Houston, Texas. Could you believe this? 3,000 people reached out to this lawyer's law firm trying to get Diddy. Could you believe this been going on and there's that many alleged victims? And nobody knew what was going on. Just the Hollywood insiders with the, you know, freak offs. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now all this on the miners, all these people calling. Yo, he had a lot of free time on his hands to be in a relationship, so called, off and on with Kim Porter and the models and whoever else, and then flying out to be around 3,000 victims, you know, all at once. Y'all. I only get 24 hours in a day. How many hours in a day do y'all get? 3,000 alleged victims that he supposedly been in contact with and did all this. Somebody make this make sense. Put it in the comments. I got to know, man. I... He and his team have been vetting these claims that now they are representing over 120 accusers and that over the next 30 days, they will begin to file different civil suits. That this is not a class action lawsuit. That they in other words, it's not a class action lawsuit where they all put it together and try and get the bag and then break the bag down. What this is is an individual lawsuit where they go and they each individually ask for their own individual bag because they got their own individual situation. And that's what this is. This is not a class action lawsuit where they all come together and intertwine. This is an individual lawsuit where each victim is going to go in and say, ah, he touched me here. Oh, he did this. He did that. And I want this amount. They're going to say, I will take this because the government going to take it anyway. Could you imagine that he has to forfeit over bad boy, um, you know, peril line, the alcoholic line, Combs Enterprise, you know what I mean, is is movie media line. Everything have to be forfeited over if he loses his trial. And now he have 120 people going after the bag. You tell me what does that look like to you? What title do you give this in today's uh, date and time? They are going to uh, continue to vet these allegations, but right now they feel strong about these. So he also said today that it's not just Combs that will be named as a defendant, that there will be other high profile individuals, some household names. He mm. says, quote, many powerful people. Mm. There are many dirty secrets. Hey, yo, could you imagine what that indictment is going to look like when it drops? Can you, when they these names come out, this is going to be bigger than any election, even the greatest election of our time that's taking place in less than 30 days that this is overshadowing. Pay attention to what's going on. All right, let me ride for a minute. I'm going to give you one ride. I'm at trial, Rob. And, my, uh, you know, my co-defendant, he there for the body. He going for the body. I'm going to speed this up, make this nice and quick. Y'all like when I stick, slow it down so you can feel the emotional effect, but I'm not really trying to get emotional right now. But check. So my man's sitting there, and they said that he took the joint. He, you know, um, blew somebody in the face, da 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 you know, didn't kill him. Other dude grabbed the joint, stood over him, hit him four times in the upper torso, bomb. You know what I mean? One of the old boys killed her, da 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 So while he was there and he was talking, it was closing statement, his lawyer said to the jury, he said, you know how, he said, my wife is pregnant and I took her the other day to go eat over the Japanese smorgasbord. You know how they throwing the knives up in the air and you just watching the knives and they chopping it up, chopping the vegetables and sliding them over and the fire cooking and they got the hands going with the knives. He said, yeah, well, it's trained for you to watch their hands with the knives and what they're throwing over is already cut up. So when they 
chop it down after you watch the knives. It looked like they chopped it in all those little pieces in those two quick da -da 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 chops. You know what I mean? So the object is to have them watching your left hand while your right hand is running circles around them. And he said that's what the prosecution is doing by using the defense that they're using against his client, which was my co-defendant. So it's the same thing going on here to bring it back to full fruition so you understand. This right here, it's like watch this instead of, you know, which is the left hand is all this Diddy stuff instead of the right hand, which what, what really matters is the election. But ain't nobody paying attention to the election because we always see what's going to happen with Diddy and everything else going on in the YSL trial and I'm doing something on Russell Simmons. But I'm just giving you what you want. But in the meantime, I'm telling you where you need to go after you leave here. Go check out the news and what's going on with the election and exercise your right to vote. All right? That's what we're telling you over here at Unique Mecca Audio. Let's get this. I don't even see an emoji or nothing. Um, I mean, he says oh, that his team man. has collected pictures, video, and that the allegations include violent sexual assault or rape, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, dissemination of video recordings, and sexual abuse of minors. So um, this was something else that they talked about, that there are 25 accusers who were... How did he have time to do all of this in 24 hours? That's my question. Put it in the comments and let me know. Allegedly minors at the time that these uh, allegations took place starting in 1991, mm. span all the way um, up over two decades. Um, he also talks about where these individuals are from. He said that they hail from more than 25 states, New York, California, yeah. Florida. We know that Diddy had a residence in Miami. Yo, 25 different states in 24 hours in a day? What did he spend an hour in each state? Hmm, make you wonder. But just pay attention to this and don't just look at it like, ah, I can't stand this guy. Just look at what's going on and you'll see the vilification. It is crazy. This is what we have come to. Come on, let's ride. Uh, Georgia, um, we've reached out to Sean Combs' legal team for comment. They have not yet responded. Combs is currently being held at the Metropolitan Deten Detention Center in Brooklyn uh, while he is awaiting trial. On the now, when I was in <clears throat> MDC is what they call it, right? When I was in MDC, I loved it because, you know, I'm a part of that underworld that's in MDC. But here's a man that's not a part of the underworld that looked down on the underworld and now he's grabbed and thrown into the underworld and faced to have to deal with us when he thought he was above us. And now you have to live with us. Now when you run out of toothpaste, you got to ask one of us for a squeeze of toothpaste. You know what I mean? Just so you understand. Now, you could only spend about, what, 160 hey, you know what I mean, a month in the commissary. And this is a man that had a thousand bottles of baby oil. So imagine how many boxes of Fruit Loops he had. Imagine what his pantry looked like if he had a thousand bottles of baby oil. Uh, uh, and he looked like he was eating, you know. But MDC, they had... <clears throat> I ain't gonna front. They're making a big thing out of it, right? Let me stop it. Let me ride and stop it. They're gonna do a whole lot of front. MDC, when I was there, you understand? Last I was there was that, 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 like 2007. You know what I mean? It's 18 years ago, so they might be right. But when I was there, that was a clean joint. The people used to clean up the joint, the uh, inmates, they made sure their area was clean, their cell was clean every morning, and the inmates took care of it so it was clean. The way they making it sound on the news is like the prison went down to nothing, it's dirty, it's this and it's that. So that means that the inmates are living dirty is the way they're putting it out to the media, which I understand. But what I want to say is the inmates make do with what they have to keep their areas clean, to keep the germs off of them. Of course, you have some people that's living in there just like they saying on the news. But a real man that know how to survive, he's going to get up every morning and get the little cleaning supplies they give you in a little styrofoam cup, you know, a little Ajax and a little square, you know, um, green scouring pad and going to go scour out his sink and his toilet and wash his floor down with the rag before he start the day and make sure his cell is clean and germs free. 
Now you might go in the next person's cell right next door to him, and as soon as you go in there, you smell all kinds of stinks. You'll even see feces on the wall. But the cell right next door, the walls get wiped down every day. And I mean literally. I know dudes that get up every morning, get the cleaning supplies, and wipe down all four walls, wipe down their cell, wipe down their desk, and everything in that cell get wiped down in their cell. And this is not one person. You know what I mean? This is how we're living in there. We take turns. Like if you got a celly, you say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you clean the cell, and I clean it. Um, Tuesday and uh, uh, Friday, you know what I mean? And on the weekend, you know, we do whatever. So once you do that now, you got that understanding with your cell. And when it's your day to clean, you're going to wipe the walls down, the ceiling, the lights, you know, the toilet, the floor, you know, take the mattress out, wipe the bunk bed off, the thing the bunk bed was on, and you clean that joint. You know what I mean? That's how you keep your area clean. But then you go in the cell next door and it's everything they tell you on the news. So I'm not telling you they lying on the news. I'm just telling you that it depends on the individual how he carry himself and treat himself on the news. You know what I mean? Put this up. I don't like the way my hood looking back there. Let me set it up right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a little better. Ah, uh, now nah, bring this out. Uh, so that's where we at, man. So um, that MDC Brooklyn was something else, man, you know, but I loved it. I was there, my man Quan from Bridgeport, you know, he treated me like a king because I was a pass through his, I was what they call a holdover. So my man Quan from Bridgeport was there, you know what I mean? He held it down. He had like four, five different pair, $2,500 Kazals in his cell. And that's how he moved around the joint, lock a fat to death, four or five radios. I came there, Quan looked out for me with everything that needed to be looked out for. And then a couple of the Bronx homies, they cooked me a good meal. Cause you know, I don't go, they don't keep me them places real long. You know what I mean? Cause that's a holdover. So they scared that I might hook up with the homies and cause havoc. But you know, the homies from the Bronx um, cooked me a big meal, man. Big meal, big meal that night. And I'm talking about, I was riding for about a month on the plane and buses all over America with nothing to eat, man. I mean, you know, it's like just riding on the bus in the desert for hours sucking your spit with the dust coming in the window and it's 110 degrees and you handcuffed and shackled with a black box and you riding through where you see cows and goats and farms, what you see, and I'm from the city. And this is how they got me riding through this joint, right? Chained up and did this for about three, four weeks a month. Then when I get to MDC, now I'm in the city, I guess they hear Funk Master Flex, rest in peace, K Slay, round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. Round of applause. I'm, hold on, hold on. I'm going to have to do a whole video on what my experience was like coming back to New York after a decade, but coming back while I was still serving a life sentence because that mindset was different. But anyway, so we up in there and um, I'm here in case Slade doing the joint. You know, Otisville, lockdown. Farrington, lockdown. Schoolkill, lockdown. Trenton, lockdown. And the bar shaking. Boom, like they closing. I'm laying in the cell with the headphones, just like Diddy doing right now, listening to the radio. And I didn't even realize I was locked up. That was what they call my escape. You know what I mean? That's it. I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, but now Rikers Island is worse than MDC Brooklyn. Don't get it twisted because the feds, they put a grip on their thing. Rikers Island's a whole nother island, whole nother, you know, animal. I just want to throw that out there. But, you know, that's where we at, man. I'm riding, you know. See, this is how I ride, man, you know. I hope y'all enjoying the ride, but we're going to get back to this Diddy thing so we can tap this thing out, man. All right. The New York indictment where he is charged with racketeering, um, sex trafficking, and uh, prostitution uh, charges. Now, I also just want to point out um, that they also claim that 62% of these individuals uh, are identifying as an African American and that they are evenly split between female accusers and male accusers. And now, that's crazy, man. They're going after the bag so much that you got half men is saying that he essayed them. What they won't do for a dollar. Look at the last 30 seconds of this, man. Okay, so this is very interesting. And he said that they, he said, you know, look, I know that everybody expected me today or wanted me to name other high profile individuals. He says, I'm not going to do that today. 
but it will come at some point. He says that these names will shock you. Wow. I mean, shocking details to say. Now, you know, that's where we at, right? So I just can't even believe that this is going on like this right now, right? Let's take this over here to Diddy. Now, Diddy's sitting here in a world of trouble, as you already know. I don't understand how anybody could really look at this and see that everyone is going after the bag and they're saying that, you know, like, it's all good. I don't understand that for the life of me. But you sit back now and know that what everyone thought was legal then was illegal then, and now they're exercising their right to charge you with you breaking what was illegal then that you thought was legal because society allowed it to happen and it became the norm in society. They going back to clean that up, but they starting with the people that look like, let's keep it moving. Don't say you wasn't told over here, Unique Mega Audio. I got a joint on Russell Simmons getting ready to drop. Um, I like the way this set up look. And I want to thank you all again and give you all a round of applause, man. You know what I mean? For the donations, make sure you hit the icon and hold on, y'all. Hold on, man. Why y'all do that? Let me talk a little bit. Now, my Instagram is on the screen, right? Unique Mac Audio. My Cash App is on the screen. Unique Mac Audio Hall, dollar sign. Make sure you hit the icon and say it was created in 2020. The book is on the screen of Roaring Harlem. And we got the merchandise. You have the right to shut the, you know what I mean? Which is to remain solid. That's all it is. You know, so let's tap out right now. I cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime, the crime. Hey. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Rough. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in hall. Uh -huh. He cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. An Instagram page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn. Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin. Uh -huh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. It's talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grams got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squilling to the cops make an audio G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Real. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Run. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. Uh. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Glenn. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Yeah. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Word. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take heed, homie, lend the air. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown, but uptown. now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's nope. about buying property to make the community ours. Back. So we can get back to the...